Hello everyone, welcome to the first episode of Ask Mo. I'm so excited about this. My name is Mo. I'm a lawyer and I'm licensed to practice law in the province of Ontario. I answer questions relating to getting licensed as a lawyer in Canada, grad school, and general advice about life in Canada. Please note that whatever I say in this video is not legal advice. So let's get right into today's question. So guys, this question is divided into two. The first one is, what do I need to know before moving to Canada for school? And the second one is, what do I need to know before starting grad school as an international student? I don't want this video to be long because I know that we all have lives and we have things to do. So I'm going to break it down into two. In the next episode of Ask More, I will be dealing with things you need to know before starting grad school as an international student. But for this video, we're going to be talking about seven things you need to know before you pack your bags and move to Canada for school so let's get right into it one Canada is cold guys Canada is really really cold and I have a brother who lives in Ottawa he's always told me oh Canada is cold but I didn't know how cold Canada was until I moved to Canada and started living in Canada so before you move to Canada sit down and ask yourself this question do I like cold because there are provinces in Canada that are really cold and there are some provinces that are not as cold for example Alberta is like a very cold province Saskatchewan is also another cold province Quebec is a cold province Manitoba is a cold province on the flip side um, British Columbia is not as cold Ontario is not as cold so ask yourself this question do I like cold if you like cold pack your bags move to a province like Manitoba or move to a province like Saskatchewan and enjoy your cold but if you don't like cold you can consider moving to you know warmer provinces such as British Columbia I heard that BC is very very warm I've never been there but I heard that it's a very very warm province so you want to do your due diligence and make sure you're moving to a province which is suitable for you number two what language do you speak? There is a province in Canada called Quebec where they speak both English and French, majority of the time French. There is also a city in Ontario called Ottawa which is also the capital of Canada and in that province they speak English and French. So if you're from a French speaking country, you would want to consider moving to maybe Quebec or a city where they speak French. So it's easy for you to integrate into the city you know, and settle down. I have a friend who speaks French. French and then she moved from her country to London, Ontario and it's been so hard for her to settle down and integrate into the society because in London we speak English. If you speak English, consider moving to an English speaking city or an English speaking province so it's easier for you to settle in and integrate into the system. Number three, do you want to stay back in Canada after school? International student, this is very very important because uh, international student fees is not a joke we pay three times or even four times more than what local students pay so you need to sit down and ask yourself this very important question do i want to stay back if you want to stay back consider moving to a province that has an easier system for you to work with because different provinces have different rules about immigration for example in quebec it is much more complicated to get a permanent residency or work permit after you're done with school because quebec operates a civil law jurisdiction so you have to do your due diligence do i want to stay back if you want to stay back consider moving to an easier province i know for example i'm in ontario i'm in london ontario and in ontario it is not as complicated to get a work permit or a permanent residency so consider that is after paying a lot of money for international fees do you want to go back home or do you want to stay if you want to go back home you don't need to consider this point come here finish school pack your bags go home but if you want to stay back do your due diligence which province is the easiest province for me to settle in immigration wise number four is accent so guys nobody told me this i i wasn't aware of this i didn't think about it until i moved here 
so my first class i remember it was introductions to negotiations i was very excited about the class i just moved to canada i was ready to kill it and i went to class and the professor asked the question obviously i knew the question i was like me 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 uncle me <laughs> and the professor called me and said so what is the answer and i remember answering the question and then he was like could you please come again and so i repeated myself and then he said could you please come again and then I repeated myself. I repeated myself like four times before he understood what I said. And guys, I won't lie, I felt very conscious about it. I remember it happened in another class. And then I stopped answering questions in class. I just got very self-conscious. I was like, why can't they understand what I'm saying? Am I not speaking English? Is the professor deaf? Can't the professor hear me? And so I stopped speaking in class. Guys, I am Nigerian, 100% Nigerian girl, and I have a Nigerian accent. They are Canadians, and they have a Canadian accent. The way I pronounce my words and the way I speak is different from the way they speak. If you're Ghanaian, you're going to have a Ghanaian accent. So that was the first thing I had to do. I had to understand that I'm different. My accent is different. I speak differently. Now, the second thing I had to do was how can i find a way to work around this i'm a lawyer and i speak for a living i speak in court i have meetings i talk to my clients how can i communicate with them if they don't understand what i'm saying so i had to find a way to work around this so i started pronouncing some words differently so in canada obviously because they have a canadian accent they will pronounce their words differently for example in nigeria i say stipend a canadian would say stipend a Nigerian would say peasant, a Canadian would say peasant, a, a Nigerian would say Ottawa, a Canadian would say Ottawa. So I had to find a way to pronounce my words differently. Now, not change my accent. I'm not asking you to change your accent. Do not change your accent for anybody because that is what makes you unique. You stand out with your accent. I'm not saying change your accent, but I decided to pronounce my words differently. Some of my words differently and it worked for me. And now it is easier for me to communicate with my clients and communicate with every other person while they understand what I'm saying. Five, no African time. <laughs> I'm from Nigeria, and in Nigeria, there's something called African time. What that means is if a party is supposed to start at five, just know that nobody is showing up until seven. And so I brought my Nigerian mentality here, and I thought, oh, well, maybe African time will work here. I remember there was one class that was supposed to start at seven. And then I was like, the professor won't come, Jerry. Like, it's the first day of class. And so I strolled into the class around 8 a.m. I was shocked. The professor was already teaching. Everybody was sitting. And I just sat in one corner because I was very ashamed of myself for coming late. And so I knew that Canada do not joke with their time. Once they say 5 p.m., 5 p.m. it is. So if you are moving from a country where they do African time, please know that there is no African time in Canada. Number six know that people are going to smile at you unnecessarily so i went to the uk a lot when i was younger and i know they do this in the uk people just smile at you for no reason like on the bus people like smile at you i'm like why is this one smiling at me but then i moved here and i noticed that they also do it here as well so you can be on the bus on the train and people would just be smiling at you like for like two seconds at first i was so confused i was like What's going on? But then I got used to it. And now I understand that when they're smiling at me, it's a way of acknowledging me. And it's just a way of, you know, greeting me. So just know that people will smile at you. And the last thing is Canadians love small talk guys canadians love to talk about hockey love to talk about the weather they love to talk about their pets their dogs their cats me i don't like small talks i don't like it i prefer to stay in my house you know and just read or dry up then go for an event i start talking but i had to learn though i had to learn so for example you might be in the elevator maybe going to the 10th floor and then someone is there with you and person says oh what a beautiful weather out there today <laughs> at first i used to get confused like why is this man telling me about the weather like i don't care but now i care <laughs> even though i don't care i pretend to care 
so i'm like oh yeah like the weather is so beautiful out there today <laughs> you know just just say something i didn't know anything about dogs i didn't know anything about cats but all of my colleagues have dogs you know most of them have cats i had to research different types of dogs different types of cats so that when they are talking you know i also have something to say so canadians love small talk so if you don't like small talks you know this is something you would want to learn when you move to canada so guys those are all the seven tips i have for you if you're moving to canada for school i hope you enjoyed this video and watch out for the next episode of ask more because i'm going to be sharing the things you need to know before you start grad school as an international student thank you so much for watching and i hope to see you in my next video bye